On the night of December 2nd, 1984, around 40 tons of MIC methyl isocyanate gas was released from the Union Carbide Factory in Bhopal. This tragic incident led to the deaths of more than 25,000 people and affected over 573,000 people due to the gas's effects. This is considered one of the deadliest industrial accidents in human history. However, even in that tragedy, no victim experienced the level of suffering that this one man endures daily. Who is this man, what happened to him, and why? Stay tuned as we unravel this heart-wrenching story that combines human error, scientific mishap, and an enduring fight for survival. So, hello guys, you are watching Brain Bargain, and let's get started with a new episode. This story begins on September 30th, 1999, when three employees of Japan Nuclear Fuel Conversion Company, known as JCO, were preparing nuclear fuel for the Joyo Experimental Fast Breeder Reactor at the company's Tokai facility. Nuclear fuel is a material used in nuclear reactors to generate heat through nuclear fission, which then powers turbines. The nuclear fission process is the key mechanism through which a nuclear reactor generates energy. This nuclear fuel is made from three major isotopes, uranium, 233, uranium, 235, and plutonium, 239. While preparing this nuclear fuel at Tokai, the three employees, Hisashi Aoki, Masato Shinohara, and their supervisor Yutaka Yakakawa made a small mistake. They poured 18.8% enriched uranyl nitrate solution into a vessel that contained more radioactive chemicals than the critical level. As soon as they did this, they saw a bright blue flash from the tank. Due to the chemical imbalance, an unexpected and uncontrollable chain reaction began. And within seconds, all the gamma radiation alarms in the facility started sounding. The three knew they had done something very wrong and quickly moved as far away from the vessel as possible. But unfortunately, it was still too late. Immediately after the accident, Hisashi Aoki and Masato Shinohara started feeling unbearable pain throughout their bodies, became <coughs> nauseous, and even had difficulty breathing. Upon reaching the decontamination center, Hisashi vomited, and all three workers present at the site lost consciousness. They were hospitalized, and their bodies were examined. It was found that they had been exposed to radiation levels beyond anything previously recorded in medical history. Hisashi had been exposed to more than 17 sieverts of radiation, Masato to 10 sieverts, and Yutaka Yakakawa's body had absorbed up to three sieverts. To understand how dangerous these figures are, you need to know what a sievert is. Just as grams are used to measure weight and centimeters to measure height, the unit used to measure how much radiation a biological body has absorbed is the sievert. Now, according to data from the USNRC, an average American today, surrounded by radiating equipment like mobile phones and digital gadgets, receives about 620 millirem of radiation annually. 620 millirems is equal to 6.2 millisieverts, and there are about 1,000 millisieverts in one sievert. Based on this equation, the amount of radiation a human receives in a year today is 2,742 times less than what Hisashi's body absorbed in just a few seconds. If that still doesn't seem like a lot, consider this situational comparison. The atomic bomb dropped on Hiroshima, which killed thousands of people standing miles away, had the highest estimated energy and radiation at its hypocenter, the point where the bomb hit. Hisashi's body alone absorbed that same amount of energy and radiation, making him the most radioactive man on the planet. Soon after the incident, Hisashi's wife and young son arrived at the hospital. At that time, looking at Hisashi, it didn't seem like anything had happened. His face was slightly swollen, his eyes were red, and there was redness on his face, but except for his head, the rest of his body showed no signs of injury, no blisters or burns. However, Hisashi did complain of pain near his hand and ear. Doctors were amazed at how well his body was holding up despite such high radiation exposure. But within 24 hours, he suddenly started having trouble breathing, something he had felt right after the accident but had recovered from. Now, his condition was deteriorating rapidly. He couldn't breathe properly through his nose, and seeing him struggling, doctors immediately gave him oxygen. But that was not his only problem. 
doctors noticed that his abdomen seemed more swollen than the day before. When his condition worsened further, he was admitted to the emergency room of a Tokyo hospital three days after the accident, and all his reports were done. Doctors seriously couldn't figure out what was happening to his body. On day six, when they received the reports, they were unbelievable. When they looked at the image of the chromosomes in Hisashi's bone marrow, instead of a normal pattern, they saw only scattered black dots, which was unusual. This image indicated that Hisashi's bone marrow and chromosomes were breaking into pieces due to the radiation impact. Since these were not repairing themselves, it meant his body had stopped producing new cells. Doctors told the family that they needed to perform a stem cell transplant as soon as possible, and luckily, his sister was ready to donate blood stem cells. Stem cells can be considered raw materials from which specialized cells are generated and created, depending on the condition they are kept in. For example, the body has various types of cells like cardiac cells, blood cells, nerve cells, etc., but they all originate from the same primary stem cells that evolve or develop into their current form based on their environment. Doctors hoped that the body would respond, but it wasn't happening. The radiation had caused such permanent damage to Hisashi's body that it couldn't recover. New stem cells were not forming in Hisashi's body. No matter how hard they tried, new stem cells couldn't form, and the damaged cells due to the radioactive effects couldn't repair themselves. After two to three weeks, when nothing changed, doctors somewhere accepted that Hisashi's revival was now difficult. Hisashi's immune system was destroyed, with nearly zero white blood cells left in his body. To prevent him from getting affected by the pathogens present in the hospital, he was kept in a special radiation ward, but still, his health was deteriorating. After 10 days, he started feeling very thirsty, and no matter how much water he drank, the pain and restlessness from his thirst wouldn't subside. Hisashi's body had become so vulnerable that when doctors removed medical tape from his body, his skin would peel off with the tape. This was undoubtedly a painful experience, but even more painful was that Hisashi's body wasn't producing new cells. The skin that peeled off with the medical tapes wasn't healing. The epidermis, which is the outermost layer of human skin that protects the delicate parts underneath, had entirely deteriorated. Two weeks after the accident, he stopped eating, or rather, he couldn't eat. To keep him alive, doctors started feeding him intravenously. In simple terms, this is a process where nutrients are delivered into the patient's veins through fluids. Due to the lack of epidermis, his pain increased, and every equipment like needles used in his body caused him more pain than a knife. Hisashi's condition became such that he couldn't describe his pain. One by one, many of his organs began to fail and medical alternatives were used. About two months after the accident, he had his first heart attack, and his breathing stopped, but doctors managed to revive him. Hisashi's condition was worse than death, and he was enduring it every hour. His entire body was covered in blisters, his skin had deteriorated, he couldn't breathe properly because his lungs were almost unresponsive, he couldn't eat because his body wouldn't allow it, and walking or moving was out of the question. He had become a living corpse, always lying down, unable to eat properly, and suffering from medical needles piercing his body daily. Hisashi's wife wished he could live until January 1st to see the start of the new century, but fate had other plans. About 83 days after the accident, on the night of December 21st, around 11.20, Hisashi had a heart attack, and after examination, it was declared that due to multiple organ failures, Hisashi had passed away. In this incident, two other victims, Masato Shinohara and Yutaka Yakakawa also couldn't escape the effects of the radiation. Due to cancer, internal bleeding, and multiple organ failures, Masato passed away on April 27, 2000, about seven months after the accident. However, Yutaka, who was exposed to comparatively lower radiation levels, received treatment in Chiba for three months and then recovered. Later, in legal proceedings, six officials of the company were found guilty of negligence in this incident. Among them was Utaka. By September 2000, the company had compensated 6,875 people with a total of $121 million and signed an agreement that none of them would sue JCO in the future. This incident opened the eyes of the law to the high risks associated with radiation-related jobs and the plight of employees in comparison to those risks. 
they were neither provided with safety equipment nor proper training, and due to this negligence, two happy families were destroyed. After this, Japan enforced strict safety measures and provisions, and then everything returned to normal. In this whole matter, who do you think was at fault, and what punishment should they have received? Let us know in the comments below. I hope you learned something new from today's video. If you did, please like this video and share it with your friends and family.